Hi, my name is Paul Moyer. I recently fitted the Push 11.6 rear coil shock to my Specialized Turbo Levo. The difference in the handling with the 11.6 is immediate and real. I'll show you those differences with back-to-back -back testing. The original Air Rock Shock versus the Push 11.6 coil. And I'll demonstrate those differences out on the trail. The Push 11.6 in itself is an engineering masterpiece. It has transformed my bike. This is how I did the testing. The original Rock Shock is with my best settings set up with the Shock Whiz and fine tuned to what I like to ride. The 11.6 is factory set and tuned for the Turbo Levo. Spring is an option and that's set at my weight, it's a 600 pound spring. The rebound travel speed is matched best as I could and in fact the Rock Shock is one click slower than I used to ride. I fitted each shock and rode a five kilometre trail. This is the actual trail I'm riding now. It's called Leo Lands. Fast flowy, some G outs, a few little jumps. Around 12 minutes long. At that point I stopped and took thermal imaging photos of each shock. I then tested each shock over a choppy chattery corner. Another one over a trail log jump and then through a couple of different G outs with exiting bends. I have not videoed the setup of each shock. You'll need to trust me. They are set on the best settings that work for me with near identical rebound speeds. I'm going to show you how each of these shocks performed on the trail. Okay, trail testing. This is the original rock shock fitted to the bike, 210 millimeter long, 52.5 millimeter stroke, the Push Industries 11.6, that's the coil shock there fitted, and the spring 600 pound. This first section is a chopped out, you'll see bumps and divots along that section there, and then into the corner it's very chattery with braking bumps and erosion. On the left, air, on the right is the Push 11.6. Now you see the air skips over that first divot, Again, the 11.6 hugs the ground. Into this corner, you'll see that the rock shock air will skip over the chattery bumps. You see it moves sideways. Whereas the 11.6 coil hugs the ground, it's planted, and the rider's got full control. This section is a fast G out, then a bend as you exit. You'll see here the back end lifts from the rock shock air and again here. Here's the coil, the 11.6, smooth, hugs the ground, in control, planted all the way. And I start pedaling up here. That's better confidence and control. Cross the log. Yeah, it feels like it just sticks when it lands. This is a fast 25, 30 kilometer hour log jump along a single track. This is a rock shock air shock. Have a look at the height and it lands right next to that gum tree. There's a lot of rebound and the rebound travel speeds are set exactly the same. This is the 11.6, the push 11.6 coil. Straight back on the ground, track straight, controlled. Okay, the final back-to-back -back test along the single track, 30 kilometers an hour, fast through the G out to the left. It's hard packed and slippery. Here's the rock shock air. pogo -E rebound effect. I correct it. The 11.6 coil planted and around the corner where it's little bumps, you can control it. So to demonstrate the air shock again, a second run, the bounce not so bad this time, but again, the traction is lacking and I nearly got that tree. This is a thermal image taken after each 12 minute run. This is the rock shock. Continually compressing air heats the shock. Continual friction with the seal on the shaft heats the shock. You can see the result. Now with the Push 11.6, it's a coil. Apart from the compression head where there's dampening, there's a little bit of heat generated. The temperature remains stable. The performance remains consistent. Big advantage. I went to visit Cyclinic, the Australian reseller for Push in Brisbane. 
I wanted to share with them my feedback and get some further insight into the 11.6. Talking about the 11.6 for a specialised Levo, it has been a really, really popular shop globally for push. Main reason for that, a lot of bikes using the yoke style system can actually put a lot of force down through the lower shaft section of a coil shop where it's actually different and it's not just an off the shelf shock that fits the Levo, it is actually a shock built for that bike in many, many ways. Over this side we have a specialised Levo shock and then over here we have a Yeti but one of the big differences that make this shock specific for Levo, that steel shaft there. And you'll notice how the bumper is actually encased inside the spring retainer. So that means on a conventional coil shock, you'll find the bumper flattens and essentially nothing under a hard compression, where this provides a lot of end stroke support, as well as having a hydraulic bottom out piston inside the actual shock. So down at this end, you've got an oversized spherical bearing that sits down in the eyelet. Moving up into the damper, we have a specific tune set for the Levo. Then of course, going up into the valving assembly, these two valves, one and two, are set based on a little bit of degree of rider preference. This little, you could call it plastic piece here that helps stop any spring rotation or spring bind, but also any spring noises coming out from the spring. But it also keeps the spring perfectly straight on the shock damper and then is retained with a little circlip at this end here. Really nice and easy for spring chainers in a Bush 11.6. Spring from A to B will always remain perfectly consistent, giving the best possible ride quality and also the most accurate in terms of the actual spring rate itself. This is the only robust coil shock you can throw on a specialised Levo. And from a performance perspective, it absolutely is chalk and cheese. When I fitted the 11.6 coil shock back onto the bike, one of the first things I noticed was the cornering stability, the cornering traction, the cornering confidence. So I've ridden with the Air Shock, the standard Rock Shock Deluxe, for now a couple of hours. I've gone back and put the coil shock back on. There's an immediate difference. The rear feels like it's stuck to the ground. Around these hard packed corners, they're not off camber, but they're not banked up either. The back just hangs on. It doesn't skip. It feels like it's glued, like this one, little few little bumps through there as well. Hangs on much, much better than an air shock. I'm really surprised. It's great to do a back-to-back -back test. The choice between an air shock and a coil shock is a personal one. Both are great shocks. For me, I love the planted, confident and controlled ride of the coil. The ride is super plush and smooth. The cornering grip is amazing. The jumps are now controlled and balanced. And the rough stuff is now fun. I can ride both shocks fast, but with a Push 11.6 coil, I feel in total control. This shock for me is set and forget. No more air pressure adjustments and the performance remains stable even after hours of riding. All I do now is switch between my ultra plush downhill mode or my fast flow single track mode. What do I like about the Push 11.6? Quite simply, it gives me greater confidence and greater control of the bike on the trail. I love it.